Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is on the request of a student and here I will solve example 1.54 and chapter and chapter problem 1.54. So the first part, uh, part A says that we have to prove the validity of the following expression. This is equal to n when alpha is 1 and it is as shown here for any other number. Let's build uh, some concept uh, of the summation series. If this is the limit, it is from 0 to 3 a n, then we'll write it a 0 and then a 1 and then a 2 and finally the last limit a 3. This can also be written as, instead of 3, we can write it 4 minus 1. The answer will remain same, only instead of 3 here we are writing 4 minus 1. Why I am doing this? But we, Because we got to generalize this now. So if instead of 4 minus 1, we have n minus 1, then what will be the last term? It will be alpha n minus 1. Here it was alpha 4 minus 1. Here it will be alpha n minus 1. So this is the general concept of the summation series. And now what will happen if alpha is equal to 1? So all the alphas will now put the values uh, as 1. So this will be 1 0 equal to 1, 1 power 1 1, 1 is power 2 1. So 1 power n or 4 1. So this means that it will be uh, we have four ones here, so it's equal to four. Or we can also write that it is this four minus one plus one. Same way, we'll derive a formula for this. So for n minus one, the total value will be n minus one. Here it was four minus one, we'll write n minus one here. And plus one, this plus one. And so this will end up to be equal to n. So this proves the first part that when alpha is equal to 1 then this is equal to uh, n. Now we move to the second part. We have to prove this for any complex number a naught is equal to 1. Now from here we can what we can do is we, we take this on the left hand side, we take the denominator on the left hand side and so the relation will now look like this. And for this we have to prove that it is equal to 1 minus a to the power n. So now let's see the left hand side. Okay, so the left hand side is this one here and this can be written or we can elaborate it or expand it actually. So we expand, expanding we can write it like this that first 1 multiplied by this term, 1 multiplied by this minus alpha multiplied by this term. And now if we put in the values of this, so this one here, we know that this can be written as alpha 0, alpha 1 and the last term is alpha n minus 1. And similarly here we write minus alpha and then in bracket we just duplicate these same terms here. And now if we open this, we multiply all this by alpha. So the left hand side remains same but the right hand side will now all be multiplied by alpha so we get this term. Now if you look carefully this one you can see that alpha uh, alpha 0 remains there but alpha 1 cancels with minus alpha 1, alpha 2 cancels with minus alpha 2 and similarly all the term will cancel even this one will cancel with this. So what will remain is minus alpha n and therefore this we can write it as alpha 0 from here and minus alpha n 
from here. And we know that alpha 0 is actually equal to 1. Anything to the power 0 is 1. So it is 1 minus alpha n. So we have proved this. That the left hand side is equal to right hand side. So this we have proved. And therefore we now bring it here. So we have proved that this is equal to alpha minus a n divided by 1 minus alpha. Okay, now let's come to part b. Now we have to prove this. And remember this is limit is now up to infinity instead of n. So let's see how we proceed. We have, we know this formula. We just solve this <coughs> for a naught is equal to zero. So we'll apply this formula. Now n minus one is actually infinity here. So this means that n is also equal to infinity because minus or plus one with infinity does not make any difference. So we will replace n by infinity and for alpha less than 1 a raised to, raised to the power n or a raised to the power infinity will become 0. How? Just let me show you. Let's say a is 0 0.9. I'm just taking a little bigger value but you can take 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. And this power 3 is giving 0 0.729. If we increase the power 30, then it is reduced to 0 0.042. If we reduce this to, let's say, 1000, then this will be almost 0. And if you bring this to infinity, this will be totally 0. So that is why we write a n is equal to 0, provided a is less than 1. Because if a is greater than 1, this will keep on increasing to infinity. So keep this part in mind. And so what we are doing here, we are replacing this n by 0. And replacing this n by 0, you get the answer. This is what we want. This is the answer. So I hope uh, you understand this so easy technique but we just know have to know the technique Let's okay now part b we have to prove this n a n is equal to alpha divided by 1 minus alpha square okay so we just saw in part b this formula so what is the difference? It is just multiplied by n. Now to get this n, what we need to do is that we got to differentiate both sides. Differentiating both sides with respect to alpha. This is left hand side and differentiation of the right hand side. And we use this formula. I hope you remember this. So the differentiation of a n on the left hand side and this we differentiated, we got these terms, just follow this rule, uh, the denominator, differentiation of the numerator, minus numerator, differentiation of the denominator, divided by denominator square. Now this part will now become n a raised to the power n minus 1. And here if you simplify, simplify this differentiation of 1 will be 0 so the left term becomes 0 and differentiation of the this one will become minus 1 so we get this term and simplifying we get the term shown here now the difference is that we need to have a power n what we got is a power n minus 1 so we multiply by a, a both sides so multiplying both sides by a we get n a raised to the power n minus 1 multiplied by a will give a n. 
and on the right hand side one will be multiplied by alpha so this is the answer and the last okay so this is the last part we have to find the value of this one for alpha less than uh, one okay now what is new here is that we are starting from the limit n is equal to k we have learned so far uh, from n is equal to 0 now so we have to change this in index or indices so this index if you subtract minus k from here this will become 0 so when we subtract minus k we add plus k here so we adding plus k so this is now in terms of the uh, n0 infinity that we have learned and this we can separate by like this a n multiply by a k will give a n plus k we take a k outside because the dependent variable is n so we keep it here and now we'll apply this formula that we have just learned for this portion and so we'll get a k and for the right hand side we get 1 over 1 minus alpha and this is our final answer so I hope uh, you have learned these simple mathematical techniques thank you